What's up guys and welcome to today's video. You'll see behind me we've got the good old R32 sedan all taped up. She got a little bit of primer laid down and Randy's coming by today to lay some paint on this thing. But the most exciting news, you guys have heard me talking about the engine for this thing for way too long now. And I'm beyond excited for it and it just got dropped off today. I hope you guys enjoyed that little promo. It was a lot of fun to make. Now I'm gonna take a break and talk to you guys about a massive partner of the channel, ShipStation. Last year was a crazy climate for e-commerce. Things went through the roof and I think this year everyone is understanding that things are not slowing down. With ShipStation, you will never have to worry about shipping again because it's a shipping solution that will handle all your shipping needs quickly, affordably, and painlessly. We at LZMFG have been using ShipStation for quite a few years now and when we made the switch, it changed the game completely for us. We went from inefficient as heck to making you guys happier by shipping stuff out the door as fast as my 653 wheel horsepower JZX100 Chaser Avante 2.5. You can keep track of orders from any sales channel and it lets you figure out which carriers have the best shipping rates. Not only are you saving time, you're saving money. You might ask me, what's my favorite thing about ShipStation? Well, I like that it saves me time and I like that it saves me money. It's kind of a no-brainer. And for you guys in Australia, the UK and Canada, ShipStation is now available there too. You're gonna love it, I promise. Ship more in less time with ShipStation. All you gotta do is go to ShipStation dot com slash adam lz and that will get you a free 60-day trial that's two months stress-free no hassle shipping just once again shipstation.com slash adam lz want to give a massive thank you to shipstation for sponsoring this video and now you guys can go and make ship happen time to do engine things now i'm gonna be honest it's been a while and i don't remember the full story but at some point i decided i wanted to have jp up in connecticut build me a neo head so i got a set of kelford cams they make 272s for the neo head i had a hard time finding who made them i believe it's a 272 exhaust and a 264 intake when i had the series 2 head with hydraulic lifters i was limited to a 256 cam and i wanted to go to the neo to ditch the hydraulic setup and I also went with oversized valves and half inch head studs. I got a HKS 2.8 crank for it, which I was super excited about when my block kind of took a crap on the dyno and the alternator tension or whatever ended up breaking the snout of the crank. I figured I might as well do what I've always wanted to do and do a 2.8 bottom end. But as a lot of you guys know, building engines is tough because a lot of things have been out of stock. The industry got hit hard between COVID and manufacturing. Everything's been behind, but we got the bottom end, we got the head, and I'm gonna give you guys a full rundown on the new setup for the R32 sedan. Mike's here today, same dude that put together the 2J that we're running in the S15. Uh, tell me about this thing, what kind of machine work did you have to do to make this whole block brace situation get on there and what did you do to the bottom end? Talk to me. Alright, so we started out with the uh, bare block and we machined the girdle and the pan rails down to fit the, the girdle on here. And then from there we went on to uh, torque plate honing it to 0.25 over and decking the block and uh, then just you know, getting everything assembled. Uh. If you guys aren't familiar with torque plate honing, basically what it does, it's a big piece. We actually sell it, we have it from PRP. It simulates the head being torqued to the block. Sometimes you'll get distortion. So when you do the bore and hone, you can make sure that you don't have any distortion and everything is nice and true. Uh, this block brace is basically to help prevent twist and flex in the block. Once you get over a certain power level, you do start to crack these blocks. It's kind of the Achilles heel of the RB. So PRP offers a nice solution. Now this crank is the HKS 2.8 crank. Yeah, we, uh, I got this crank from HKS for him. This was a 
spectacular as far as spec wise. Everything was within a tenth of a thousandth from rod to rod and from main to main. Um, it balanced up perfectly. It was super close. And uh, we got BC rods. They were all perfect. Um, These are their 625 rods, ARP mains, and then you did the spline drive on the crank for the oil pump, right? Yes, sir. I got, I put this up in a lathe, turned it down to make sure it's got the proper fit for it so it uh, can have the, uh, uh, was it PRP? We call it the ice. The ice. We got it with the ice. What do you know about that, Sean, huh? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Your hands clean, bro? No, no. Nice <laughs> Um, so other than that, I think I already covered kind of the rough specs, but machine work wise, are there any other weird intricacies? I know we got to figure out the whole oil pan situation now with this yeah, block race. Yeah, the oil pan is going to be a little bit of a, a little bit of a learning curve, but everything else, um, just tap the oil galleys for it, make it easier to, in the future, if everything had to be rebuilds and everything is pretty, pretty standard. One cool thing that Mike's super adamant about too is uh, balancing the whole entire rotating assembly with the clutch, flywheel, every single thing that's gonna go on the engine, the damper, everything. Yep. How to check out? Um, everything checked out was, was, was actually one of the easier ones to do. Uh, the flywheel was super close and the ACT clutch and flywheel, or the pressure plate was super close, which is nice for me. <laughs> but yeah, everything turned out really great. So this thing should be able to rip. And I know that does become more increasingly important when you are taking engines into the higher rev range. This one, I believe, I'm hoping for like 8,500 to 9,000, but it's kind of going to be limited to whatever the turbo wants to flow. I think I'm going to go up in size. Traditionally, on my last setup, it always wanted to roll over after like seven grand, but I think that was a lot of the small cams oh, yeah. and uh, just that head design. So. Yeah, this is definitely, um, if you, you put a bigger turbo on it, it'll be able to eat. She, we, we like to use the word sing. She's going to sing. Sing? Mm -hmm. oh, gonna eating, sing. eating is more of an LS thing. Oh, with yeah. these, uh, Sorry, I'm used to like horsepower. No, I know, yeah, but like <laughs> the the clout, we we like to sing with our engines. Oh yeah, you know the JDM this clout thing chasers. Should, this thing should sing then. Yeah, <laughs> big LS guy, <laughs> big Ford guy actually. <laughs> R32 engine bay is all done. Randy killed it on the paint. It looks great. No more yellowing. Uh, no more chips. It looks super good. And he spent his time getting everything real nice. You'll notice we blocked off. The original hole that was down here, which should help keep the bay a little bit cleaner, keep some dust and debris out of here. And then also, if you remember, we got rid of this nub here. It's now no longer there, so we should have a little bit more clearance for turbo stuff. But one little thing that we did run into, if you look down in here, the undercoating is starting to fail and actually peeling back. I've heard of this happening before if you don't prep it properly. Uh, this whole section basically already peeled off. Um, the good news is it looks pretty good under here. The bad news is there's a section here where you can see there's a little bit of rust as the uh, undercoating was kind of trapping some of the moisture. Maybe there was like a little split up top or something. So between this needs to kind of get prepped so we can kill the rust on it. Got to respray here and then the area where Marco welded that plate um, in order to uh, delete that nub, we'll need to do some undercoating there. So before we start reassembling this, which originally I wanted to do today, we're gonna do a little bit of uh, undercoating just to get everything perfect in the fender wells before we continue. I really wanna pull this livery off, but I know if I pull the livery off, it's not gonna go back on. The paint on this car is just rough. It's different color white on every panel. It drives me nuts, but at least we've got the base situated. I just think I'm gonna end up repainting this car white at some point. I just don't know when, but uh, yeah. I'm excited to get this thing together. We pretty much got everything we need now. Mike just needed to take the oil pump and the like rear main cover back with him so he can machine them down. Since the block brace is like O-ringed, it needs to have a perfectly flat surface. Um, so those need to be machined down so they can be level with the block. If you guys didn't see on social media, TJ is actually coming to join us at Fuel Fest. But he wanted to refresh his Z, so we're helping him get this thing sorted. Randy's over here. He's actually taking the wrap off of this thing. It was wrapped red, not painted. And he's gonna be laying down a new color for TJ. So when TJ comes, we're gonna have his car looking extra fresh for him. I'm stoked to see it. It's gonna be cool. I can't wait to ruin his doors with my tires. Sad news, but good news, I guess, in one way. Uh, planning out into the year, we needed a little bit more cash flow and I had to let go of some things. Celsius, I think, is getting sold this week. And so is the GT350 Voodoo. So this one came in the car that I got for parts. And uh, originally I wanted to put it into a drift car like a chaser or something, but I think what will probably make more sense is doing like an illuminator with a supercharger. Cause this thing's just worth so much money and having it sit here for something that I probably won't build in a long time. Um, this engine, I see them on eBay for like 25 grand. I sold it for a pretty good deal, but 
anyway, we're saying goodbye to her and it's gonna live on a better life. I think actually in like a resto mod 60s Mustang. And in other news, the A90 Super is back, which means we can finally start playing with this thing. So we brought it over to a buddy of ours's friends. Uh, you guys know Lee from Monster Garage. He has some guys that do a lot of body work for him. And we were gonna have them cut out that whole rear cap. Basically, if you remember, I bought that panel that replaces this whole section, but they actually found it easier to put it on a frame machine and pull out the damage. And you can see, we didn't have them clear coated since we're gonna be putting on a Street Hunter wide body and we're gonna be ending up repainting some of this section anyway, but it looks like it was never in a crash. So that's all good now. I was able to find a red bumper from a junkyard. So now, uh, and look at that, the color is almost perfect. A little, a little scratch here, but not too bad. So we didn't need to repaint the bumper. Uh, I've got the fenders, I've got the bumper. So aesthetically, this car is pretty sorted on parts, but until we can fit the four rotor, we need to get the front main cover. We have the pan now, but in order to put that on, we need the front cover, and then we can start mocking it up, making mounts and everything. But things are finally starting to come together, and like there's like one little piece left to the puzzle, and they'll be able to dive into this thing. Focus though, in the meantime, I wanna get that R32 back up and running so we can just be all hands on deck on this thing. All right, I'll check in with Johan. Johan, what you got going on over here with all these fancy shiny little bits? Talk to me. Um, we're getting the new motor ready to go in the car. Um, before we put anything back in, we gotta inspect and go through the whole dry sun system. Um, we're gonna let this system, like the oil pan and the oil pump, uh, we're gonna send it in for service. Uh, they'll service it, check for parts, any wear and tear, they'll replace it and get us back a fully functional system that we don't have to do. Um, while we're here, we're pretty much removing any oil lines, checking them out, clean them. And I clean, took the part, the whole, uh, I dry some oil pan and clean the whole thing throughout. Um, so now this is ready to go. So pretty much now is go through the lines, the oil lines in the system. If we gotta replace them, we'll replace them. Once we get the oil pan back, reassemble, go through anything before the motor goes in to make sure that if we gotta wear, uh, replace a wear item that is easier to get to while the motor's out, we do that beforehand and then we'll get this car back. Now, we did have a failure on one piston. Uh, it wasn't an insanely catastrophic failure, but there still is potential that there's metal in the system. That's part of the reason we wanna be meticulous. So we don't cook another motor just from not being meticulous. This car is not a huge priority in comparison to some of the other projects, but because it is gonna take some time to get this stuff serviced, uh, while we are waiting on the parts from Mike that he's machining, uh, it was kind of a good opportunity and a good window to get this stuff sent out, get it gone through. That way, by the time we are ready to work on the S15, we get everything ready to go. But priority right now is to get the parts back from Mike, so that way we can start working on the R32. And then once we get that last little piece for the Supra, we can dive into that too. Undercoating came out sick, it's all fresh now. Uh, and there's uh, now the thing with the heat and the thing when it turns yellow that I'm trying to address. So I really like the DEI trans tunnel shield. Um, it's not really intended for firewalls, but it looks a lot better than that gold reflective foil. Um, and it's worked great on the S15. So Johan taught me a little trick where you can use tape to kind of map out how it's gonna be. And it'd make it look super clean. I'm gonna try to hole saw out these holes um, so it just has a nice clean look instead of cutting squares and having white showing through so I'm gonna map it out with tape and then pull the tape off and use that as a template on the tunnel shield and see how it looks I actually have a uh, silver trans tunnel shield too. I think I'm gonna use the silver just because I think it'll look less out of place on the white versus having the black, um, which although it looks good and it kind of looks OE, I think the silver on the white will kind of blend in a little bit more. I 
wrap this up for this video, I'm starting to have second thoughts uh, about the other two holes. So underneath this, you can kind of get an idea of what it's gonna look like. I'm really happy with it. It looks clean. It almost looks like an OEM like BMW shield or something. But I don't run heater core in this car, so I don't really see a reason to have this stick out. However, I wanna get this video up at a certain time because I have a merch drop today. So I don't think I'm gonna have time to pull the heater core out of this car uh, before this video goes up. So you're gonna have to wait to see the final look of this in the next video, but I think you can kind of get a good idea of it and I'm pretty happy with how it's coming out. You might ask, why did I repaint the whole bay if I was just gonna cover the yellow spots with this? Well, it's one of those things, you always know that it's there. And like, even though you might not know that it's there, all you guys know that it's there. And if there was yellow underneath this, that's one of the things that would make me not be able to sleep at night. So we'll do that. And then once we get the whole turbo stuff mocked up, I'll figure out, um, how much and where I want to put it over here to hopefully prevent the bay from continuing to yellow because this thing gets hot. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I know it was a short one, but we've got a lot of stuff now to start get cracking between this car and the Supra that are ready for us to start wrenching. Goodbye. When you said